Hi, my name's Leanne. Uh, I am a yoga teacher based in Brackley in England and I've recorded this yoga flow um, in honour of International Yoga Day, which is Sunday the 21st of June. It's a nice slow and steady flow, uh, there are plenty of options, so if this is your first class or you're new to yoga, it's ideal for you, but equally if you've been practicing for a little while as well, there are options that you can take. So we're going to start in a nice easy seat. And by easy, I mean that you've got choices right from the very beginning. So if it feels good for you, you can cross your ankles comfortably. You may choose to opt for a half lotus, so have one foot placed on top of the other calf. You may choose to aim to get your shins parallel, rolling the knees forward a little bit. So explore those options, see what feels good for you. Find your sit bones rounding into the mat, loop back the shoulders, sit tall. And then just turn your palms over, gently resting the backs of the hands on the knees. And here, I'll invite you to close your eyes. So you tune all of your senses inwards. So the theme of International Yoga Day is yoga at home and yoga with the family. And if you've got company joining you today, then that's excellent. But if it's just you and me, that's okay as well. And I want to explore this idea of yoga at home. And I'm going to invite you a few times to come home and that's going to be in reference to your thoughts. So if you find your thoughts drifting away, come home, bring your attention back into the room that you're in, onto your mat and into your body. And know that there are plenty of options available within this 45 minute flow. You'll hear me use phrases such as maybe you do this or if it feels good, try this. Or if such and such opposes in your practice, go ahead and try that now. So there are plenty of choices. And that's the amazing thing about yoga is that you get to choose. You have permission to vary, vary, vary and modify poses as you need to. And also make sure that you take breaks whenever you need them. There are gonna be a few times when I'm gonna encourage a pause in a particular pose just to allow you to gather up your thoughts or come back to your breathing, allow the heart rate to slow. And that's where you can channel back into the sensation of coming home, gathering your thoughts up, bringing everything back into your practice and into your mat. And also the idea that home, hopefully for everybody, is a safe space. So you've got the option to modify the poses as you need to so that it's safe for you to practice. And the time you've got here on your mat is your safe time, your safe space. So let's take a moment to bring our attention to the breath cycle. You'll notice that the ribs lift, your lungs inflate as you breathe in. And then the ribs fall, the lungs deflate as you breathe out. Let the breathing come in and out through your nose. We're going to keep it there through the practice so watch out for the poses that you might find more challenging that cause you to open your mouth and pant let's keep the breathing soft and natural and rhythmical and as you sit here feel the parts of you that are in connection with the ground and parts of you that are lifted the crown of your head in particular let the shoulders soften draw the elbows low Feel the shoulder blades melt down your back. Collarbone broadens and lifts. And the core is just gently engaged. And you can keep your eyes closed or blink them open. We're going to sweep the hands wide and reach them up towards the sky. Breathing in as we go and then connect your palms. Bring the hands down to the centre of the chest. Breathing out. Let's go again, release your hands to the side, breathe in, reach up, maybe you look up. And breathe out, connect the hands, bring the palms down together in the centre of the chest. One more time, but we're going to take a pause at the top. So, breathing in, sweep the hands wide enough. Take a hold of your left wrist with your right hand and gently draw it across towards the side. So a side body stretch. Shoulders stay forward, looking ahead. Reach up and change hands. 
So opposite hand, grab the whole of the wrist, tilt it over towards the sky. Beautiful. Reach up, palms together, look up, take an extra stretch, and bring them down, breathing out. Fantastic, well done. All right, let's make our way into tabletop. So we're gonna come onto all fours. The wrists are gonna be underneath your shoulders, the hips over your knees, and then just gently move forwards and backwards. And this is a really good time here at the start of the practice to figure out what's feeling a little bit tight, what feels stiff, but also what's feeling good, what's strong, what feels like it might need a nice extra stretch today. Let's take the movement side to side. As you do that, start to move your wrists. You can walk your fingertips to the outside edges of your mat. If it feels good, point them towards your knees. You'll be gentle with your movement here. Notice as your wrists lift as you rock forwards and backwards. You can even turn them all the way inwards. Notice how the position of the shoulders and your elbows change. And then reset where the fingertips face the front. And you're gonna make a circle with your shoulders. Make it as big as you can, looping forward and back, around over the top and change direction. Again, using this time to scan through specifically wrists, elbows, shoulders, how are we feeling? And let's do the same with the hips, make a nice big circle with the hips. So the shoulders don't move as much now, you might notice the hips release a few cracks and creaks. Change direction, scan in with the feet, the knees, the hips, how are they feeling? Okay, and then neutral tabletop, is where we come to rest with the shoulders over the wrists. Spine long, tailbone draws towards the ground and the belly button pulls in. And now we're gonna look up as we breathe in, let the belly drop, loop the shoulders back. And then look down, lift the shoulders, tuck the tailbone, breathe out. Two more like that. Breathe in, chest comes forward, broaden the collarbones. Breathe out, tuck the chin, lift the shoulders, tuck your tailbone. One more time, make it a bit bigger if you can. Feeling the stretch in the front of your body and the stretch in the back of the body. Push up, lift up. Awesome, well done. All right, push your hips back and widen the knees ever so slightly. Take a long stretch forward. This is child's pose. Now I'm introducing this one to you so that at any point that you need to in your practice, if you just want a moment to yourself, come to child's pose. You can have your arms long or bend the elbows to allow the shoulders a bit more space. All right, so this is your safe space as and when you need it in the practice. Walking the hands ahead of you, lifting the hips, but keep the chest low. So we've got puppy pose. Chest is down as the fingertips reach forward. And then take the breath in. We're going to reach up with the right hand and then thread it underneath the left side of your body. So the shoulder is going to come down towards the ground. And I'm using my left hand, pushing it into the mat to loop the shoulders back. We call this threading the needle. So if it's possible, your shoulders are vertical, but your hips are still reasonably level. Push away with the left hand, lift the right arm all the way up, breathe in and bring it back to the mat. Good, we'll do the same with the left. So right hand on the mat, left hand lifts. As you breathe out, loop it underneath the right side of your body. Bring the left shoulder to the mat. Look long and on your arm. Using the right hand to push the shoulder back. You should get a nice stretch at the side of your body. When you're ready, push into your right hand. Breathe up, lift up, left hand high. And back down towards your mat. Awesome, well done. All right, I'm bringing my knees back hip distance apart, hands shoulder distance apart, and then I'm gonna tuck my toes and then send the legs out long and straight. You should end up in a plank position. So I'm lifting up through the shoulders, not letting the hips sink down, strong in the upper body. So we'll use plank a few times in this practice. Then think about pushing away with your hands Lifting the back of the thighs towards the edge of your mat and then let the heels drop and lower. This is downward facing dog. And just take a little bend and extend through each leg. 
looking for length in the back of the thighs, creating space. You can bend both legs together, straighten both, maybe take a little shift of the hips side to side. But ultimately it looks a bit like an upside down V. Your hands are ahead of you and you're pushing with finger pads and palm of the hand into the mat, creating a line from your wrist through your shoulders up into your hips. And the hips are lifted, but trying not to let the lower back sink. Tuck the lower ribs in so you're firm. Good. Take your right leg now, straighten it, sweep it up behind you. So you extend the line of your arms up through your hips and then into your right heel. And then bring the right knee to your chest. Let the shoulders come over your wrists. Good. Breathe in, send the right leg back, extend it again. And on the exhale, bring the knee back in towards the chest, but start to tuck your chin so you round your back. Good, notice how the body's a bit higher. One more time, breathe in, send the leg back. Tuck the knee in towards your chest, tuck your chin, push out through the shoulders, come onto your left toes. And then as you look between your thumbs, you're gonna step your right foot through. Good. Let's take a little bit of movement forwards and backwards to encouraging the hips to open up here. I'm gonna give you an option. You can stay here with your left leg straight, or if you prefer, lower it to the mat and release your toes like me. All right, so the right knee is over your ankle. Okay, now let's let the hips sink down. Lovely, good. The left hand is on the mat. Turn your chest towards your knee and reach up with your right hand drawing down on your right hip. So we're not letting the whole body open. We're twisting from the hips through to the shoulders. And that in breath at the top. And on the out breath, lower down. Take your right foot wide. Let the knee fall out. Maybe you roll onto the outside blade of the foot and lower down. If you have yoga props, you may choose a block underneath your elbows. If not, if you have the range, you might lower your forearms all the way down to the mat. But if that doesn't feel good, keep the arms that little bit straighter. Think about pulling the chest forward, allowing the hips to sink down. Good, well done. We're going to straighten our arms here, bring them underneath the shoulders, tuck the back toe, lift up and step back into plank. Good, take a moment to pause, draw the tailbone towards your heels, belly button pulls in, and then release the knees, release the toes. Tuck your elbows tight into your ribs as you bend them and gently lower to the mat. Chest and hips land at the same time and then gently straighten your arms, lifting your chest for cobra. Now I'm broadening my collarbones and trying to pull my chest forward, elbows back. If this feels a little strong, simply lower the chest more towards the ground. But my toes are extended and my glutes are engaged. So play with the range, see what feels good. It's a stretch for the front of the body, but the more you extend your arms, the more the arms and shoulders are working, and you've got that bend in your back. Good. Gently soften down, tuck your toes, push away from the ground, lift the hips, and we're in downward facing dog again. Here we bend and extend, creating that space in the back of the legs before you let both heels fall low, but it's okay if they don't touch the ground. Legs straight or straightish, pushing into your hands, pulling the chest towards your legs. Left knee this time lifts up and back. Long straight leg, bend in the knee and bring it in towards your chest. Let the shoulders rock over your wrists. Breathe in, extend the left leg again. And as you breathe out, bring the knee tighter to your chest, tuck your chin look towards your knee. Good, one more time, breathe in, send it back, breathe out, knee to nose, lift up high on your right toes, and then look between your thumbs and step your left foot through. A little bit of movement, forwards and backwards, lowering the hips towards the mat. Same option here to keep the back leg extended, or like me, drop it to the mat, release the toes. Collarbone pulls forward, the body as long as the hips melt low. Right hand stays on the mat. Turn the chest towards the knee and lift your left hand up. 
still square in the hips though, looking out for this one, opening out, try and pull it towards the ground as you extend, left hand high. And let it come back to the mat, or walk your left foot wider, let the knee fall out if that feels comfortable, you can roll onto the outside blade of the left foot. You have the same choices here, you can use a block underneath your elbows, perhaps the forearms are comfortable coming to rest on your mat, or if you prefer, you've got straight arm options. So thinking about drawing the body along, it's a nice stretch for the muscles around the hips. And then we come back onto straight arms, lifting the body up, place the hands underneath the shoulders. If your leg isn't already extended, let's extend it now. And then step back into plank, perfect. This time as we lower down, you can stay either on the toes or drop to the knees, so you've got a choice. You're gonna breathe out, elbows tuck tight, body lowers down. Good, release the toes, breathe in. Cobra, or baby cobra with the arms a little softer. Imagine if the chest is pulling forward, elbows pulling back. Let the shoulders soften, but stay active, so you're not sinking into your shoulders. Breathe out, we soften down towards the mat. Tuck the toes, power up the legs, lift, push away, and downward facing dog again. Good. Now if you need a pause, this is a great time to rest in child's pose. So let the knees sink wide, toes to touch, hands ahead of you, maybe you grab a sip of water, or we're just gonna stay in downward facing dog for a couple more breaths. You can use your in-breath to lift, and your out breath to soften. Let's take one more big breath. So if you were in child's pose, come back up to meet us this time in downward facing dog. Right leg, lift up and back. Good, right knee to chest. Remember to tuck your chin, nose to knee if you can, lift high on the left toes, and then step through. This time, we are gonna let the back leg drop down, release the toes, take a breath in, fingertips lift. And as you breathe in, the body might lift and then we wanna sink down as we exhale and land in the pose, taking the hands to the center of the chest. We're gonna make a connection with the left elbow to the right knee. So we're adding a little twist. And once you've got the connection, aim to draw the hands to the center of the chest, looping right elbow and shoulder back. As you twist, check in with your breathing. Is it still natural and rhythmical? Or do you need to release from the twist a little bit? If this is too strong, you can do this with straight arms as well. So you've got a choice. Good. Next time you breathe out, release your hands to the mat. Just for the fingertips, you're gonna stabilize yourself. And maybe this time you choose to straighten your back leg. We're gonna breathe in again and lift the fingers. And now we're in high lunge. Back leg straight or straightish. Exhale, bring the hands to the center of the chest. And we're gonna take the same twist, left elbow to right knee, lean forward, make that connection, and then rotate to the side. We're still looking for the hands in the center of the chest, lifting the right shoulder and elbow, still breathing. Good, well done. Next time you inhale, reach forward, square your shoulders, and exhale, land the hands down. Push into the ground, and step back to plank. Knees or toes to exhale and lower down all the way to the mat. Hips and shoulders land together, release the toes. Breathe in, lift. So feel the front of your body stretch, stay active with your toes. Breathe out, lower down. Good. Tuck the toes, push the ground away, lift the hips high, sink the heels low. Perfect. Left leg, lift it up and back. Long line for a three-legged dog. Bend the left knee to your chest. Dome your back, come high on your right toes, knee to nose, then look between your thumbs and step through. Right knee lowers towards the mat, release your toes. Take a breath in, fingertips come up. So as we inhale, we enjoy the lift. As we exhale, land in the pose, let the hips sink low. Take your hands into the center of your chest, palms together, and this time, Right elbow to left knee. Lean forward, make the connection, and rotate. 
drawing back on the left elbow, the left shoulder, hands aiming for the centre of the chest. Check with a twist that you can still breathe comfortably. And then gently return to centre, fingertips down to assist with balance. Maybe this time you choose to power up the back leg, straighten it. Breathe in, fingertips lift, high lunge. Breathe out, palms down in the centre of the chest. Same twist, right elbow to left knee. You use that connection, rotate to the side, lifting your elbow and shoulder on the left side, hands to the centre of the chest. Still breathing. Good, well done. Next, inhale, reach forward, stretch. And on the exhale, land the palms down, push the ground away, lift the shoulders and step back for plank. Perfect, well done. Lift the hips up high, push the hips, heels back. Beautiful. All right, so another chance for you if you need to. Knees down, toes to touch, sink back, child's pose. The opportunity to grab a sip of water if you need it, or we can stay in downward facing dog. Two big breaths here. Inhale, lift. And exhale, sink back. Nice, well done. Another big breath. Inhale, lift. And exhale, sink down. Awesome. Okay, right leg again. Lift up and back. This time, bend your right knee and squeeze your heel towards your hips. You may choose to open the hips up so you get a little bit more knee lift if that feels good. And then bring the knee to your chest. Nose to knee. Roll show your shoulders over the wrists, lift up high on your left toe, and then step through. This time, if it feels good, keep your back leg straight. Breathe in and we lift to high lunge. Fingertips rise. So the thumbs come to rest over the shoulders, the shoulders are over the hips, and then squeeze your left glute so you square your hips forward. Good. Back heel, you're going to land it lightly on the mat, send your arms long, shoulders over hips. Press the right knee wide, push into the outside blade of your back foot, and this is warrior two. Looking towards your front fingers, loop your shoulders, broaden the collarbone, stretch your fingers. Nice. Now I'm going to take a breath in and reach the hands up high. And on the out breath, let the left hand lower and roll over your back leg. So the legs stay in the same position. This is a reverse triangle. You should feel a really nice stretch through the right side of your body. Your left hand, maybe it's on your hip, maybe it's on your thigh, or if you're looking for a bigger bend, bring it to the lower leg. Keep the body exactly where it is. Bend your right knee, sink the hips down, keep breathing. Find your edge. This is reverse warrior. Then as we breathe in, keep the legs where they are. The arms are gonna cartwheel horizontal to the ground. Back to warrior two, perfect. Flip your right palm and bring your forearm over your knee. The left hand is gonna reach up and over and then loop the left shoulder back, extended side angle. You've got even more choices here. You can choose to lower your right hand to the mat, keep the shoulders low back, maybe it's on the inside of the foot, maybe it feels better on the outside. Or if you want to work on toning and strengthening the legs, hover that arm off your thigh or reach it overhead. Wherever you are, please keep breathing. Loop the top shoulder back. Feel the energetic squeeze of the muscles. We're here for three and two and one. Loop your hands back down to the mat, land your palms, rotate on your back toes, push the ground away and step back into plank. And we're making our way down towards the mat this time as you tuck your elbows. You've got the option to pause halfway before rolling over the toes and keeping the hips and knees elevated. This is upward facing dog. But if you prefer, hips down, knees down, loop back for cobra pose. And then we're going to exhale down towards the mat, tuck the toes, lift up, you come through plank and push into downward facing dog. Well done. Hopefully now you're noticing a little bit of warmth through the muscles. Maybe the breathing has got a bit quicker and that's okay. We can do that same routine on the left side. Left leg up and back. Bend the left knee, 
Bring the heel towards your hips. Maybe you open the hips up by widening the left knee and then squeeze it in towards your chest. Knee to nose, shoulders over wrists. Come high on your right toes and step through. Back leg stays long if you can. Breathe in, fingertips up. High lunge. Awesome. Thumbs over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Squeeze the right glute to square your hips to the front of the mat. Then the back heel lands, hips and shoulders open wide, press back on your left knee and into the outside blade of your right foot. Loop the shoulders back and look over your left fingers. Beautiful, as you breathe in, reach up with both hands, straighten your front leg, take a big reach, keep your legs where they are, right hand lowers into that side stretch. Same options, hip, thigh or lower leg for your reverse triangle. So you've got the stretch of the left side of the body, loop shoulder and elbow back, strengthen the right. Good. Keep the body where it is. Rebend your left knee, sink down, reverse warrior. Breathe, pause, find your edge. Keep the legs where they are, cartwheel your hands, horizontal again. Warrior two, well done. Front palm flips upwards, elbow over the thigh, Left hand, the right hand, sorry, reaches up and over for extended side angle. So I remind you of your choices here. You can stay in this position or lower the left hand down towards the mat. So you'll notice the hips and the knee bend a little more, either on the inside or the outside of the foot, but loop back on that top shoulder. So watch out for the attention drawing down towards the mat. Try and keep the body stretched. Or you've got that option to work on strength hovering the forearm off the thigh, or maybe even extending it for that extra bit of fire. Wherever you are, keep breathing. We're here for three, and two, and one. Well done, slowly loop your shoulders back towards the mat. Rotate on your back toe so that you can square your hips, push the ground away, and step back into plank. Knees or toes to exhale, elbows tuck, breathe out, lower down. Maybe you pause halfway before lifting up to upward facing dog. Or remember you can lower your hips and knees for cobra. Breathe in, push the ground away, hips high, downward facing dog. Awesome, well done. Not quite done yet. Bend the knees, take a look towards your thumbs. You can either do lots of little steps, one big step, or a hop with both feet. And we meet here, hip distance apart. Knees soft, grab a hold of your elbows and rock, side to side. This is ragdoll. You can move your hips as well, head, neck, shoulders, whatever it is that you need. And then gently release your hands to the mat. See if you can straighten your legs a touch. Lower ribs wrap in, but the upper body is still long and loose. Stretching through the hamstrings, stay tense in the front of the thigh. For a halfway lift, slide the hands up, flatten your back, firm the shoulder blades onto your back, and try and grow as long with your upper body as you can. Just gazing ahead of your feet, again, ribs wrapped in, abdominals engaged, tailbone long. Breathe out, lower all the way down, forward fold. Take a little bend in the knees. Breathe in this time, reach up, fingertips lift. Biggest breath you've taken all day as you look up towards your thumbs and breathe out. Lower the hands. Fantastic. Well done, that's really good. All right, now that we're here in standing, we're going to do a little bit of balance work. So, things that might help with your balance is uh, to find something to look at that's not moving. It's called a drishti, a point of focus. Also, the foot that you are standing on, spread your toes, lift them wide. So, if you want to reposition yourself in the center of your mat, you can. We're going to work with tree pose, but I'll show you a little twist as an option. Initially, the right foot, spreading those toes, sinking down, and imagine all four corners of your foot balanced down on the mat, and bring a little softness to your feet, or your knee, just so you can help to accommodate the change in balance. Your left foot, then, I'm turning the knee wide, and the sole of the foot starts to turn in towards the ankle. You can keep your hands on your hips or bring them here into the center of the chest as you gradually start to play with lifting the foot up 
Good. Now you'll be able to lift to a certain point just using the strength within your hip. As much as you're aiming to twist the knee out, try not to let the hip shift and twist. So use the range that you naturally have available there within your hip joint. Keep the hands in the center of the chest. Maybe you extend them, grow tall. You can even bring your palms together if you wish, or take a look up towards your hands if you want an extra challenge. Another option is to assist your foot coming up a little higher. If you have slippery leggings, this is a challenge, and you're trying to squeeze everything in towards your midline. So I'm pushing my foot in towards my thigh, losing my balance completely. <laughs> Pushing my foot into my thigh, pushing my thigh back into my foot, and seeing if the leggings will let my foot stay. Don't think it's going to. <laughs> but this is a good time to show you the other little twist, a half lotus leg position. So the knee stays where it is. I'm bringing the foot even higher, almost into the crease of my hip, and I'm flexing my toes and pushing the outside, almost the top edge of the foot, into the knee. Then, this helps for me certainly to get better connection because the foot doesn't want to stay on the thigh. Same options with the hands. So you might find this a little bit firmer, it's quite nice, but just mind that for a period of time, it's going to be a little bit tough on the ankle as well. Same arm choices. Breathing, find softness, and then when you're ready, gently assist down and out. Well done. If you took half lotus, take a little bit of movement within the leg. Notice as well your standing leg if that feels a little bit stiff and tired. You can give the muscles a little rub wherever they need it. Then we're going to do the same with the other leg. So left toes, lift them, spread them wide. Find your foundation. Check that you're spreading into all four corners of your foot. A little bit of softness in the knees. Hands either on the hips or the center of the chest. And the right knee starts to go wide as I turn the sole of the foot in towards my standing leg. Playing with the range, seeing what strength is available at the hip, how high the foot can naturally go. Maybe that's it, maybe that's where it's staying today. The same thing with the hands, you can have them here in the center of the chest. Maybe take them wide. I quite like to spread the fingers like tree branches. Some teachers teach this with a angle of the elbows as well. If that makes you feel more tree-like, do that. Remember, you can bring the hands together or even look up towards your hands. And that makes it really challenging because you've got to move your point of focus, your drishti. The other option is remember to be able to facilitate, lift the foot a little higher. That's clearly my nemesis today. <laughs> lift the foot that little bit higher. Remember, you're squeezing thigh to foot, foot to thigh, or the option for half lotus. So bring the foot in towards the hip crease. Softness still in your standing leg, find your point of focus, flex the toes, and settle. And while I have got my balance, I'll say really quickly, this is a good time to bring all your attention inwards. Any uh, distractions end up disappearing. You've got the challenge of strength as well, in your standing leg, and to a degree, flexibility, and range of motion in the hip and the knee and the ankle. There are numerous balance poses in yoga. All right, when you're ready, gently release. Remember again, if you took half lotus, bring a bit of movement into your foot, rotate the ankle, checking with your standing leg as well. Maybe that needs a bit of movement too. Good, well done. We're gonna sink our way down onto the mat. So take your time to lower down, easing into a seated position, and we're gonna do little bit of balance work or core work, also a little bit of balance work. All right, sit up tall for boat pose, spread your collarbone wide, find your sit bones if you need to, move the fleshy part of your hips to the side so you can find your sit bones rounded, then do that. With a little lean back, lift your heels, check in again that the collarbone is high, and then start to hover the shins up off the ground. Good. You can release your fingertips alongside your shins, palms up, staying tall, or you can have your hands here just behind your hips. I'm not leaning into my hands, they're just providing the tiniest bit of support. Okay, maybe 
you take the option to straighten your legs. And again, the palms can stay up, or maybe you just need a little bit of extra balance assistance, grabbing a hold of the calves. But try not to slouch wherever you are. Yes, you're balancing with straight legs, quads working, hip flexors working, abdominal muscles working, we're still breathing. So find your variation, pose that you can hold, maybe you even just hear tapping your toes down. Well done. Gently release your toes, sit up tall, bring your shoulders over your knees, give yourself a big squeeze, big breath in, and soften. Perfect. Well done. All right, swoop your knees around to the side, and we're going to make our way onto our tummies, lying down here. A little bit of work for the back. Now, if locust pose and bow pose is in your practice, you've got those as alternatives. I'm going to do uh, sphinx pose here, sphinx. So, shoulders over the elbows, forearms are parallel, and the fingertips are pointing to the front edge of the mat. Now, my toes, I'm going to extend them along behind me, pointing them and pushing the tops of the feet into the mat. And that might mean that your kneecaps lift a little bit as your thighs engage as well. Tuck your hip bones in towards the mat, and then push your elbows into the ground. Notice how you grow taller. Draw your chest through your arms, then try and pull your elbows behind you. Notice how strong your back is feeling. So remember locust pose, if that's in your practice, you've got that as a variation, or even bow pose. Resist the temptation to lift the chin. You've got it parallel with the ground, or maybe a little lower. Long legs long crown of the head, keep breathing, and gently release, soften, well done. Set your elbows wide, when you notice the tension come out of your lower back, give the hips a little rock side to side, perfect, well done. Let's give that another go. So, as an added option, you may choose for locust now to bring your elbows up off the floor, thumbs here in line with the chest, and I'll also give you the option to elevate your legs. I'm going to keep the elbows underneath my shoulders and my hands to the front of the mat with the forearms parallel. So this one here is a little stronger because your ribs are coming off the floor. So we'll start again with the toes, point them, push the tops of the feet into the mat, tighten the thighs, tuck the hip bones, push the elbows into the mat, grow tall, and then try and pull the elbows behind you. So if you take the option to lift the toes, lift them here, but watch out for them drifting wide. Keep squeezing towards your midline. Still with the chin parallel to the ground. Still breathing. Squeeze tight, hold for three. And two. And one, gently release. Well done, awesome. All right, we're just gonna take a little 180 roll. Come onto your back. Okay. Heels close towards your hips. Maybe you can brush them with your fingertips. They're gonna be hip distance apart and your toes are gonna be facing the bottom edge of your mat. So there'll be a little gap between your ankles and your knees. Palms down alongside your hips. If I move my hand away for a moment, draw the belly button in and flatten your lower back against the mat. Nice, we're firm here through the middle. That flattening exercise might just give you a little tilt of the tailbone too. And without moving anything else, see if you can get your hips off the mat. Push the lower back in even further See what's happening here, these muscles should be engaged. Take a breath out, release the hips down. Maybe you have a little wriggle, and then we'll do the same again. Belly button draws in, hips lift. And this time as you push in with your heels, lift the lower back, then the mid back, and then the upper back comes up off the mat. Maybe you take a little wriggle with the shoulders, make sure that they're comfortable, and you find as much range as your hips allow, squeezing your glutes and the back of the thighs arms long and notice what happens when you stretch your arms and get that little extra lift through the chest. Chin now lifted towards the ceiling to create space for your neck. Check that the knees aren't falling wide because chances are the hips sink low. So give the knees a little squeeze them together, they're not touching, they're just holding firm. And as an option you can bring your shoulders closer, take a hold of your knuckles and then extend your arms, pull your knuckles towards your heels. Squeeze and still the back of the hips, the back of the thighs, and breathe in. This is bridge pose. Gently release your arms, make space for your shoulders, 
and working from the top section of the back, slowly tuck the tailbone around the back and gently come back towards the mat. Good, well done. Your hips, last thing to come down. Nice. Let the knees gently swish side to side. Just bring that little bit of movement in through the back and the hips. Good, well done. Knees come on in towards the chest. Bring your eye sockets up towards your knees. Give yourself a squeeze. And then just rock forwards and backwards. A couple of times gaining momentum. And eventually, you're going to come up to sitting. Now we're going to finish this practice with a yogi squat. I'll turn sideways on, but if you wish to face the bottom edge of your mat, you can. So, help yourself up so you're in a nice low squat position. The heels are going to be just wider than your hips. And notice how I'm moving into this pose. You can do the same if you wish, or find it and stay still. So, if the knees don't feel great, it'll be more comfortable for you to come up a little higher. It's stronger though. But if the knees and hips allow, sink it down. The chest is up. I'm going to place my elbows in between my knees, palms together, pulling my thumbs into my sternum and lifting my chest. Again, you can stay still, you can move. And if you move, lift onto one toe and the other. I say toe, I mean ball of the foot. <laughs> Maybe you try both balls of the feet together. That's it. If not, keep the heels low. So you've got options. So yogi squat, either with a bit of movement for now, or you hold it still, close your eyes, tune your attention inwards. Firm the shoulder blades onto your back. So I'm trying to pull my elbows into my knees and my knees into my elbows. And lastly, the last bit of work we're gonna do is to try and lift up. That's it, so push the heels into the ground, firm up the thighs, the elbows might lose connection from the knees. Lean with the chest, stay tall, squeeze, we're here for three. And two, and one, well done. Release your hand, let the hips sink down and come to sit, perfect. Slowly, slowly, make your way onto your back. Use your arms to guide you down, ease back. Let the head connect with the ground. And I'll ask you to ask yourself, if you need anything else at this stage, maybe another back bend, maybe a twist, maybe roll the knees in and rock side to side. Anything that you need for your body, you can take that now. I feel like I need to have a little bit of movement in my hips, so I'm gonna do some knee circles. If you just wanna keep still, you can do that too. All right, start to bring your attention back into your breath. And then we'll come into our final relaxation. Shavasana pose. Extend your legs out long. Maybe give them one last little squeeze and then let the feet fall out. So notice all the tension disappearing from the legs. Palms up alongside your hips and soften into the mat. All right, and breathe. While you rest here, let me give you some benefits of yoga. You're using your own body weight to grow stronger. So no weightlifting in the gym, your own body weight, plenty of exercise to build strength in your muscles. The flexibility training gives you functional stretching for range of motion at your joints, balance in a literal sense for stability, and also checking on imbalances within the body. So you've seen that we've done one arm or one leg or one side of a body at a time. So when you can have a greater awareness of maybe where you're lacking a little bit in strength or lacking a little bit in flexibility, I'll work to address those imbalances. And those three things on their own are awesome for reducing your risk of getting injured, being stronger, better range of motion of the body or having a better sense of balance will help not avoid, but reduce your risk of injuries. But I think yoga, more important than anything, where you have the permission to be able to choose and to find variations which really work for you, feel good for you, 
and dedicate a bit of space and time for your own mental and spiritual well-being. Just gives you that extra tick in the box. It can be a very spiritual practice if you want it to be. It can be emotional, mentally stimulating as well as physical. And hopefully you will find your reason to return to the mat over and over again. Please stay here as long as you like, but if you are ready to move on, bring a bit of movement into your fingers and toes, squeeze them, stretch them. If you've got space, you can take a full body reach before gently coming onto your side and making your way back up to sitting. Similar to where we started the practice, Find a comfortable cross-legged seat for you. Sit up tall, loop your shoulders back, lift the chest, let your elbows lower. Let's take a final few breaths. Still in and out through the nose. Before we seal the practice by bringing our hands together in the center of the chest, I'm gonna give my head a little nod down and then bring my thumbs up to my forehead and say a big thank you to you for joining me today. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Namaste.